All right, welcome back to the Principal Outdoors YouTube channel. Uh, recently, I did a video on the One Boat Network, and uh, what we're going to talk about today is a little more specific on the One Boat Network concerning uh, Canon, Hummingbird, and Fishhawk as well. Fishhawk is a great company that makes uh, depth probes, I guess you'd call them, Paul? Yeah, yeah. It, it's, a, it's a data sharing system that tells you what's going on below the water. Yeah, so once again, we got Captain Paul Powell with us. Uh, he's used this equipment for a long, long time. He was actually one of the first guys to use an Optimum. Like you've been using it for over a year, right? Yeah, this will be this will be my uh, second solid season of having it. So. Yeah. So what are what are? There's a whole bunch of features in the Optimum, but what are the, obviously most people don't use all the features. Yeah. What what are your favorite features? Well, I, I compare it to a cell phone. I, I use my cell phone for taking photos. I do it for videos. I use it for emails and texts and that's it. Does it do a bunch more things? Absolutely. But the beauty of running the three together and sharing information is paramount for me because I've been a long time Fishhawk user and I've been a long time Canon user and also a long time Humminbird user. But now because they're all integrated that they share information, uh, it just it's just simpler. So uh, my boat's quite large. I have, I have my uh, sonar at the front I have my fish hawk at the front, and a lot of times I fish with the mate, so he's at the back of the boat with the downrigger. So now, instead of him saying, "Hey, what's the what's the temp at 70 feet uh, 70 feet down at the cannonball?" he can just look on the downrigger, and that data is right there. The speed of your of your lure at at a certain depth is right there. It also gives the true depth of where your cannonball is. So those are all really super cool features that are that when they're integrated sharing of information but like if I'm fine-tuning something and I want to look for a certain uh, temperature in the water column I, I don't have to go front to back back to front I can look at it right on on the actual rigger itself so if I see the water if I'm in 70 feet of water and the cannonballs down 50 and it's say 48 degrees I can bring it up to 49 and see what the different temperature is and see and see it, it helps me take layers of the water and break it down to why those fish are holding in a certain area or whatever. So that's a one feature that I'm really big on. The other one that, that it, it's kind of weird feature, but it, it, I use it a ton, is you can zero the depth of your cannonball. So a lot of times we fish really rough water and you get a good fish on, you hit cannonball up, it comes up and stops right at the water. But if the water changes from three foot waves, yeah. you're in the water, you're yeah. out of the water, you're in the and water, the and what happens? Like this, yeah, too, the right? boat's, yeah. yeah, the boat's rocking depending yeah. if you're a side sea or you're going with the waves or against the waves. You can set, you can preset it that zero is where you want it. So I leave it down three feet in the water mm -hmm. that it's not crashing. I got a wrap on the boat and it just takes chunks out and yeah. everything, right? So yeah. I love that feature that it zeroes at minus three. Yeah. I, I can't say enough about that. And I tell people that have the, the optimum, I go set it at this and they go, why? I says, because when the fish, when you bring it up, it stops the ball just, this far under the water or this far under the water and it makes a big difference. So, and you're, you're talking 12 or 15 pound cannonballs, And right? they're swinging. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and then to make things crazier, I, uh, the way the fish hawk works, is, which is a good integration, and, and I'll show that uh, on the boat setup later, but you got that hanging off there yeah. and the cannonball, and if something kinks or breaks or anything, it gets expensive when you lose equipment. So yeah. um, I prefer it in the water and, it, and it's sound and it, it doesn't bang around. But um, the other feature that I really, really lo like about it, and I played around with it a lot last year, is dialing these in exact. So if you're out somewhere, and say, say you're marking fish at 40 feet down on the, uh, 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 over 70 feet of water, and you set your rigger to 40, and then you get looking, and, you, and you're looking at the graph similar to this, and I would put the cursor on the actual uh, fish finder side, and you can actually see the cursor move around. So say we're fishing right here, at 26 six feet down and it shows that and we're catching fish we're catching you know two three pounders and then i'll see man there's a lot of bigger hooks and i can dial them in with that cursor so what you're saying just to, to interrupt you're moving the cursor and the hummingbird up here will tell you the depth of that cursor where it is yes right? yeah it pinpoints it so yeah. instead of saying oh they're around 15 or they're around 10 yeah or they're, no no they're at 12. yeah so now I know at 12 feet there's some bigger fish. Are they active or are they not? I can see from the graph they are active because there's a lot of bait and a lot of activity there. And there's some picking off the bait below. 
and there's some picking off the bait right right in it so if there's a stronger concentration of bigger hooks in an area i gotta try yeah so now what i'll do is i'll lower the downrigger down and it can give me true depth at the ball so this counter on here will say that the ball is 40 feet from the tip yeah but it's not taken into account what we call bow back so because the boat's in motion the ball will move back a yeah. bit yeah it will actually give me the exact depth that the ball's at mm -hmm. through the fish hawk yeah so now i can say okay at 12.8 feet so i would set it at 12 so it's a little above the fish yeah instead of just going 15 or 10 and it make it's a game changer it makes a big difference so so you're actually targeting different size of fish where they show up on the graph yeah, yeah. and it really works well so yeah, yeah. that's a tip that, that i i would like to share with people because bigger fish in the boat is what it's all about that's so. what people are paying you for right to catch bigger well, fish hopefully. and they and my awful <laughs> jokes that i tell the same all the time too but no it, it's uh we have a dynamic fishery on erie and there's so many fish that 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 are are catchable that you can start fooling around and, and i like i fished a tournament with some guys last year and I can catch fish, but I can't target big fish. Yeah, yeah. And and the tournament's all about the bigger fish. So I knew I was going to fish some more tournaments because because of, cause of uh, current situation and travel. So I, the heck with it. I'll just stay here and fish. Yeah. And I was kind of I was stuck. I'm like, okay, I don't know how to put fish in the boat, yeah. but I don't know how to find bigger fish. So I started playing around with this and training for it. And, and your graph will give you that data. Yeah. But how do you convert that data to something tangible that you can actually catch those bigger yeah, for fish sure. for sure it's one thing to see them on the graph but uh, you have to actually get your lures yeah, so near them right absolutely yeah. so it's 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 all about control depth fishing so yeah. and the cannon is known for that this just gives you another edge to take it to another level yeah. by integrating all three pieces of equipment and sharing that data you can just fine-tune stuff to the degree that makes you catch more fish. Yeah, exactly. And, and you're talking about the cannonballs bouncing up and down and all that stuff. Like, um, it's really is about wear and tear on your gear. We're talking about expensive gear here, right? Absolutely. We, we understand that it's expensive gear, right? So, uh, and trust me, it's made tough. I mean, these riggers are made in the same factory as Minkotas, right? They're they're tough as nails. But you got there's wear and tear on stuff, so you got to be careful with your stuff out there, right? You Absolutely. You know, um, so that's a pretty important thing too. So you're mostly fishing for walleye out there, or or what is it? Well, the the great part about Erie is we have walleyes, and we also have a, a very strong steelhead uh, component. So uh, basically, it, consider it as a, re a giant restaurant for bait, uh -huh. and if there's lots of bait there, it's not spe they're not species specific that. Yeah. Only walleyes are going to eat smelt, or only walleyes are going to eat shad. So sure. we get uh, some cold water comes in there, and the baits there heavy, and those steelies find them too. So conceivably, you could have a downrigger down at you know 35 feet, it goes off, it's a walleye, it goes off again, another walleye, and the next time you put same spoon, same color, same depth, same everything, yeah. it's a steelhead, yeah. and it changes things, right? And they're a little crazier, and they jump around quite a bit, and and uh, it just it just makes for uh, it just makes for some excitement throwing some steelies in there too. Yeah, so, sure. and, and it keeps the guys out a little longer uh, on their trip because if they can catch a second species, that doesn't sure. count towards their limit, yeah, right? For sure, so, for sure. But uh, predominantly walleye, and the same walleye that we're catching out on Erie, John, is the same ones you buy at the grocery store. Oh yeah, really? Yeah. So the commercial fishery is ca is uh, they, they get them through nets, yeah, yeah. and they sell to a distributor who sells to restaurants and, and seafood yeah. places and. Uh, as of last night, nineteen ninety nine a pound for the same walleyes that you're catching. <laughs> and what I tell everybody is ours are fresher if you catch them yourself. Yeah, no kidding. So uh, it, it the lake's on fire. It's been really strong years of year classes, and and uh, we had a you know even with COVID last year we had a strong season. We had uh, a lot of fish caught, and uh, we're finding that a lot of people are staying home for a staycation and they can't travel. Yeah. So you can still go in Ontario, and if you're fishing with the people of your household and bubble and you know hand sanitizing and all the the new normals that <laughs> as are here. Yeah. Um, I think we're going to have another great season again. So yeah. I mean, talk about farm to table, right? Everybody wants farm to table, and uh, well, you know, did this chicken play with that chicken? And yeah. all that? Well, <laughs> and, that, and that's it. Like I, you know, and I take some heat from people uh, about the amount of fish that we kill in a day, and and once they're educated and understand the business and this is as good as people and audience to tell if you take lake erie as a whole it's us on one side it's canada on the other side everybody knows that yeah. 
So then the lake's divided in half again. So between commercial and sport on our side. Mm -hmm. So if you do math, there's 100% harvestable fish in the lake. USA gets 50%, Canada gets 50 again. The Canadian side is divided in half again. So 25% for rod and reel folks like us yeah. and 25% for commercial. So we're allowed 25% of the total 100% harvestable as anglers. Yeah. What people don't understand is the commercial fishermen, they have a quota that they're allowed X for a year. Mm -hmm. And the rod and reel folks are allowed the same quantity of X. Yeah. I've been a uh, captain on Lake Erie for 35 years, and the data goes back 35 years, and it's less than 1% of our catchable quota is oh, caught. Wow. It's, it's, they've marked immeasurable every yeah. year. Yeah. So what happens is the rod and reel guys are allowed, so you look at Erie versus Nipissing or Pigeon Lake or Quarthas or a lot of other areas, yeah. they have slot limits. They have um, four as a maximum. Yeah. We have two rods per angler. We have six fish per person. And the, the season on, on Erie is open pretty much all year round. Mm -hmm. There's a couple spawning areas where they're not to check your regulations. But the same fish that we're catching on a rod and reel, you can walk into a supermarket and you gotta buy them, buy them there. So. Erie's an exception to most rules about catch and release and the rest of it because there's so many harvestable fish. Yeah. And the Canadian side, if you look at it by population, you know, Michigan, that, that's another phenomenon too. You got Michigan, Ohio, New York, and Pennsylvania. So they got four governments, different DNRs and, and the rest of it. Yeah. And we have the Ontario side. And usually you would think with that many different government interaction, it'd be a poorly run outfit. Yeah. It's precision because mm -hmm. that each each state's keeping the other state honest, yeah. and Canada has a good strong um, say in the matter too. And most of these fish are natural reproduction, Which is and amazing, and yeah. they say is like one point uh, like one hundred and fifty million fish yeah. are catchable. So yeah. for us to go out and catch twenty five or thirty that you're going to take home and feed your yeah. family. It's not a big deal. Would you do that? Like I had some Quinny guys come out on the boat, and they're like, "I'm not standing in a picture with all. We'll get crucified." <laughs> but in Quinny, it's a trophy fishery yeah, it's a where they deal. catch and release, yeah. so it's a different deal, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you so know, it, it, sorry, but it's a, it's an absolute <laughs> renewable resource. Yes. And the thing is, you know, our biologists in Canada and in the U.S., I guess. We've all, they've all learned from the past mistakes of a hundred years ago. Absolutely. You know, it's not going to get to the point where it's going to be fished out. It just, they would not let that happen. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So and we're if, not even close. And if to it that. was showing signs of being exactly. strained too much, yeah. they'd cut back the commercial sure. end, yeah. they'd cut back the sport end on our side yeah. and they'd cut back the sport end on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. no, it, it's being monitored and yeah. they do creels and they do catches and, and they, they measure stuff. And like two years ago, uh, we caught, three years ago so every wall i was this big yeah and we'd let them all go let them all go yeah. let them all and finally i'd say guys those are the same fish you're going to catch in two hours from now because that's all there is here yeah but now the beauty of those fish are three four pounds yeah exactly and yeah. That, that's perfect eaters yeah and people people are going out and they're spending more money for organic lettuce and organic this and that there's nothing more organic than a walleye that was born in that lake naturally correct <laughs> you know, grew up to a proper size and he's harvested for to feed a family. For there's food. nothing wrong, you know, there's, and there's nothing better than that. Perch right? or walleye from Lake Erie, yeah. it's the best of the best. Yeah, yeah, I heard, I heard. Good. All right, well, look, thanks for that. Uh, why don't we take a closer look at, you know, the operation of this in our little boat out there. Perfect. And uh, we'll see how stuff works and uh, how they work together. And, uh, yeah, that was great. Thanks, Paul. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so now we're here over at a boat that's simulated setup, and I can show you some of the tricks and gadgetry of how this stuff all works together um, bear with me because we're not really on the water and it's simulator mode so we got a bucket with a probe in to give us the different windows but the data that's available to you as I was speaking before you can take information from the downrigger which I have it on cycle right now it's not doesn't have any bugs in it but I got it on a five second cycle that it switches in the water column so if you're marking fish in a certain area say you're in, what are we in here? We're in 31 feet of 34 feet of water, and I'm seeing fish from the 17 to 20. Instead of just having the rigger set at a stagnant depth, you can cycle it between those two depths at, and control the interval. You can control the time, how it goes up and down. And let me just show you real quick here. So under cannon controls, it's all listed there. Your speed, your depth, line on spool, everything's there, it tells you. 
It tells you how much lines out, tells you that it's on cycle mode at a four foot interval and lots of data there. Some of the other things that, that uh, are pretty cool of how this interacts together is um, you can put it on cycle mode, which we just discussed. It's got auto up that if say, th this is handy for me, especially on Erie. If, if we're trolling along and you get caught, you see net, sometimes you don't have enough time to run to the back and get them all up. You can just switch this to, to auto up and just take it auto, confirm, and it brings everything, and that'll bring both of them up at the same time. So it's, it's kind of cool, cool way, and it's up and out of the way, and save you a chance. Or if you're, what I like the most about this is messing with my mates, where I just, he'll get them all set, and I'll adjust when he goes to jump on him, and he goes, you're playing with that thing again. So it's kind of cool, but it's a nice thing to practice on. Uh, note to self, I, the first time I got mine, I was so excited and messing around in the driveway. Take the clutch off the handle so you don't end up with 400 feet of a down rear cable in your driveway that you got to wind back on. But it, it's a good way to familiarize. You can't you can't hit a wrong button. So you can do your depth presets, which is another uh, nice feature that I like. Um, you can set them at your, your presets 20, so it shows the maximum is 30 feet. You can set it at 25. If you're in deeper water, you can set it at 50. So say you're catching your fish at 27 feet you can do hit the preset for 25 and do something else and then just let it down the last two but um the other thing that, that you can do is you can control your uh you, you can control your line coming from the uh down rear with a plus minus you can do it all individual here so i can let line out just by hitting the, the down button here or up as well so you got up up and down right there you got your auto presets, you got your auto up. The water zero is the feature I was telling you before that instead of having it right at the water line, you can set it down one or two feet in the water and have that as your zero. So it, you're not gonna get that banging against the boat that we talked about. One of the coolest things it does bottom track. So if you're a lake trout angler and you're after a lake trout, which typically keep near the bottom and you have a bottom that's messed up contours and you're constantly adjusting to keep the bottom, this one's preset at 10 foot off the bottom. So this is a, a uh, an opportunity to, you can adjust it accordingly. So I'm gonna knock it down to uh, five feet off the bottom just for, for uh, that case. And then just hit start and it will continue to roll till it gets five feet off the bottom and it holds that cannonball there. So it'll adjust if the bottom goes up or down two or three feet, it'll, it'll keep making adjustments to allow that cannonball to remain at five feet off the bottom off the bottom so i think that pretty much sums up all the bells and whistles that this is capable of it the interaction between the two seeing where the fish are having your your data from the fish hawk on your graph having the data from the fish hawk on on the cannon itself and having the cannon being able to use manually from the rigger itself it just opens up so many more opportunities to make this the game changer that it is on the water. Good, well, thanks, Paul. I really appreciate that. You know, uh, the, the coolest thing that I think about this is it's all Bluetooth, so it's wireless. So the install of this yeah. is no more complicated than installing any sonar with any downrigger. It's it's just all wireless. And so a, lot of the, a lot of the information you can do from your cell phone, like most of the, the um, setup for the downrigger is you download the latest uh, version yeah. And you, you downrigger in your cell phone talk and you get the latest data from one or the other and then they all talk together with no wiring. So yeah, I almost, for sure. I almost forgot about that. The apps too, right? There's a phone app uh, for iPhone or iOS or yeah. whatever those are called. So, <laughs> all, so all the different Mine's phones. not hooked up to here, but the, the Canon app actually does all these things that you can do everything from your cell phone as well if you want to really mess with somebody. <laughs> so it's, it's got the blue, it's, it says to retry pairing because this isn't my down rigger and I'm not going to switch everything around, but it, the down uh, rigger app, the Canon app is available and it's a, it's a must have for having the latest downloads for your, your Canons. Yeah. So, so that, that, that app is free. So just go to the Apple store or wherever you download your apps, look up the Canon down rigger app. It's free. It's even got a simulator on it. So if you want to try it out and practice at home on it, uh, you, you know, you're more than welcome to, obviously, but give it a shot. And and the, the neat part too, if there's no update, it'll tell you that you're you have the latest version on your Canon, 
So if there is an update, it'll say you need to update. And it, it's, I'm a dummy when it comes to electronic stuff. It's it's a no-brainer. It's actually easy, made for guys like me. So. Yeah, and that's what we talked about. Software updates are very important now. So uh, just stay on top of them. But yeah, your phone will tell you if you need an update or not. You don't even have to think about it. Yeah, right? exactly. Great. All right, Paul. Well, thanks. I appreciate it. That is that is some stuff that, that you won't find anywhere else. Um, you know, it makes me want to be more of a trolling guy. Uh, really? So, yeah, yeah believe it or not. Beautiful. Believe it or not. So. Hey, the other thing, John, I wanted to say is with COVID and I'm not fishing right now, if somebody has a question on any of this stuff, sure. fire me an email, jpfish at rogers.com, or my website is jpfish.com. Yep. Uh, I get a lot of people, hey, where would I mount my, I don't mind, you're not bothered. If, I, if I, I'm busy fishing, you're going to be a day or two for me to contact, call you back. Yeah. But a lot of the retail, local retailers, they call me and ask me a lot of questions. I'm not the complete guru, but I, I rigged a lot of boats, yeah. and I know not to put your downrigger in this spot because it's going to interfere with this if you're running Dipsy. So I, I can think about, I can help you with placement of that. It's simple if you send me a picture of your boat and I'd say, hey, move your riggers a little bit further and then put your rod holders there, or put a track. No, you don't need an 18 inch track. I'd use a, a six or I get, some, I had a guy last week, he had a gas cap in the way and I says, easy, put a, put a six inch behind yeah. and put a 12 inch on the other side. Oh man. And it, it for me it, it's 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 just second nature. Second yeah. nature, yeah. but to them it was like, oh my god, I can't put rod holders yeah, yeah. on my boat because of gas tanks. Yeah. It's not that difficult. The, the beauty of the system is there's so many different pieces you can add, and you know some guys have a dead rise on it, and you can put the you can shim your track to make it level. You can move it a little more uh, back or forward. You can make adjustments, and and it, it it'll make it work. So we we've had some challenges. And like I'm sure you get it with the mounts for the big screens, for guys. Sure, are like yeah. my dash won't take it. Yeah. This just takes that that technology to another level that you can make it work. Yeah, exactly. So, so, so yeah, Paul's Paul. Like I said, he's been pro staff with Canon for uh, quite a long time, and you know we touched on that. The, the reason why Paul is a pro staff, and, and and the biggest value in Paul is that he has a relationship with our retailers, right? That is extremely important. You know, you know we as sales reps have relationships with our retailers too, but. Paul is there to help the retailers and help their customers as well. And just having that relationship with them just makes our team that much stronger. So thanks for all your Thank work, you. Paul. Uh, we're going Appreciate to put up Paul's information so you can write it down. We'll put it up in the video and uh, we're, we're going to have Paul back pretty soon. So thanks for paying attention. Give us a like, give us a subscribe, look out for Paul on the water. And uh, yeah, thanks again. Thank you.